My name's Kaz Underwood. Um, welcome to Introduction to Drawing and Painting, The Basics. This is the first class in this online course. We're going to cover using line and tone to draw simple shapes and forms. Uh, moving on to a still life drawing using pencil. Um, all you'll need for this is a pencil, a sharpener, a rubber and three sheets of paper. We're going to be looking at the shadows and highlights in an object um, and how we go about drawing these using pencil. Um, I've got here a ping pong ball. You could use a golf ball or any kind of um, white ball, but a ping pong ball is really good because it's smooth. Um, so the shadows and highlights show up really well. I'm just setting up a piece of paper here um, to put the ball on to. Um, if you have a ping pong ball at home, you can set this up yourself. Um, but if you don't, don't worry, you can pause um, and work from the screen or you can print out a um, freeze frame of this um, still image. So first of all, we need to look at which direction the light is coming from. So here it's coming from the left hand side and you can see the highlight on the ball is along the curve of the left hand side of the ball. The ball casts a shadow onto the paper and there's also this crescent moon shape shadow following the curve of the sphere on the right hand side. If we look at it from the left, with the light behind us, most of the ball is lit up. There's only a tiny bit of shadow along the right, but if we move around so that the light is behind the ball, most of it's in shadow and we've just got that tiny crescent of light along the other edge. Um, you can see the cast shadow. This is quite important. It's got very blurry edges. We're going to look at that a bit later. Um, I'm choosing a viewpoint with the direction of light coming from the side, which means there's quite a good balance of light and shade. Um, half of the ball is in shadow, half of the ball's in light, and that means we can um, shade the light and dark with quite a good balance in our drawing. So um, I've got here a selection of pencils and what you have inside pencils is graphite. This is a graphite stick, 6B and 9B graphite stick. This is exactly the same stuff but without wood around it. Um, it's really nice for shading. We're going to be using a pencil today, just a regular pencil. I'm going to use a 3B pencil. Um, but people do often ask me, what do the H and B numbers mean? Um, H pencils have got hard graphite inside, so this is a 4H pencil. That means the graphite's very hard. Um, they're really good for doing sharp, crisp lines. Uh, not so good for smudging and blending into shadows. You get a lighter grey because the graphite's hard. It doesn't smudge and, and come off the pencil as easily. Um, on the other end of the scale, the B grade pencils have very soft graphite inside. So the graphite's much looser, um, it's easier to smudge and blend, and you can get softer, darker shadows if you're shading with those. So it's, it's quite good for um, shading and blending. I'm using a 3B pencil for this, and I'm using that for the whole drawing. Um, you can experiment with different types of pencils if you want to, but I'm using a 3B pencil today. Um, experiment with how you hold the pencil. So instead of holding it like a pen, try putting your hand on the top so that you can use the side of the tip um, to get a soft, even shade. Now I've drawn out this tonal ladder with five boxes. Um, the idea behind this is to start getting some contrast between your dark and light shading so that your drawings don't look flat. Um, if all the greys are the same in them, they're not going to have very much contrast and they're going to look quite flat. So this is a way to start increasing the contrast in your shading. First of all, I'm going to shade the top box of my tonal ladder as dark as I possibly can. And then at the other end, I'm going to shade a very light, very faint grey in the middle, a mid grey. I then need to try and get 
the mid-tones. So here I'm trying to get somewhere between that lightest and mid-tone and then somewhere between the darkest and the mid-tone. And I'm doing that by varying the pressure, layering up, pressing a bit harder to make it darker, pressing a bit lighter to make it less dark. Once you've had a go at that, you can try doing it without the ladder in place. So you just start off pressing quite hard, layering up lots of graphite to get your dark tones and then decreasing the pressure as you go down the scale so that you get that gradual blend from dark to light. If you've got different grades of pencils, if you've got a sketching set or you've got different pencils that you want to have a go with, this is a really good way to experiment with them um, just to try out the shading that you can get, see what kind of tones you, you get with it. Um, now we're going to just warm up, practice making lines. The first thing I would say is not to restrict your arm too much. So if you lean on the paper, if you lean your elbow on the table, you're going to restrict your arm and it's not going to be able to go around corners very well. It's not going to be able to draw nice circles. What we really want is for you to be moving your whole arm from the shoulder because then you can draw circles any size in any direction so just practice that for a bit if you're using just your hand or just your forearm you're relying on the hinge joint of your wrist or your elbow and you're only really going to get a curve in one direction so you, you tend to get quite wonky circles if you're restricting your arm Once you've practiced a few of these and your arm is moving freely, then we're going to be ready to start your drawing. So I'm looking at the ball set up on the piece of paper, but you can um, go back to the paused image or use a printout if you want to. So on your new piece of paper, you need to draw the outline shape, which is a circle because we're looking at a ball. So the shape of the sphere is a circle. So moving your whole arm to get that curve of the circle and not pressing too hard. So really faintly drawing that circle, not pressing too hard because the line will disappear later on. I'm starting to add the shadows in that crescent shape that we could see along the right hand side of the sphere. And I'm moving the pencil around the contours of the ball, so curving my shading around. And where the highlight is on the ball, I'm leaving the white of the paper. You need to start building up the darkness of your darkest shadows. Now you can go back to the tonal ladder exercise you did at the beginning. Um, I've done one along the edge here, which is quite useful because you can put it on top of your drawing to check whether your dark tones are dark enough. So you can see in my drawing, it's quite light gray. I really could do with some very dark shadows in there so I'm starting to put those in trying to get that darkest uh, part of the tonal range and having your tonal ladder there as a reference can be really quite useful for that so even though I'm drawing a white ball on a white piece of paper it's still got very dark shadows and it's that contrast of very light tones and very dark tones that's going to help it stand out from the page, give it the illusion of being three, three dimensional. So you can use a rubber to neaten up the edges. Not quite crisp edges because it's quite a smooth shape.
I'm just neatening them up as I go. And I'm working into those tones. Trying to get a smooth graduation from light to dark, but trying to get very strong, bold, dark tones. on the right hand side. So again I'm using the pencil along the contours of the ball, curving them around so that all my marks are going around following the contours of the shape. Should at this point start to seem like it's popping out from the page, it's starting to look a bit more three-dimensional because we've got the light, medium and dark tones. If your light tones have gone a bit grey you can use the flat side of the rubber to lighten them up again. You can start to look at the shadow that's cast on the ground. Now this is a bit different from the shadows we've been doing so far. Um, the shadows on the ball have had quite a crisp edge, but the shadows that are cast on the ground tend to be softer. The edges tend to be a bit blurrier. So you need to be quite careful not to draw a crisp, hard outline to the shape. It is going to be very dark. It's one of the darkest shadows in the whole drawing. Um, but the edges of that shape are very, very soft. So you can smudge them with your finger or with a paper tissue. Press softly with the pencil along the edges. Really smudging those edges and using the side of the tip of the pencil to get a nice smooth even tone. Pressing a bit harder where you want it to be darker. It's good to use a paper towel if you want to blend or smudge the edges. Um, you can smudge with your finger but um, it tends to make the paper a little bit greasy over time so it's better to use a paper towel. You can get smudging sticks which are um, they look a bit like a pencil, but it's like a rolled up sheet of paper. Pretty much does the same job. So to get that contrast of the crisp edges of the ball, against the soft edges of the cast shadow, 
can use the corner of your rubber to neaten up the edges. So you could stop here, but if you want to develop it a bit further, you could start to look at the negative space, the background behind and around the ball, and see which areas are darker or lighter. Sometimes you get this little light reflection on the ground where the light's bouncing off the object and back onto the ground. Just pay attention to the tonal relationships, which bits are lighter, which bits darker. And through doing this, any lines that you drew at the beginning, any outlines of the circle, start to disappear into the shading. So you can't really see any of those outlines anymore. They've all become part of the shadow either of the background or of the ball. Just to flag up again, this really dark shadow. So when you're choosing what objects to draw, you might want to choose some round objects <clears throat> as a development from your first exercise. Um, so in these onions, for example, you've still got shadows curving around the object and highlights on one side. Any round sort of fruits or vegetables are still going to have that same thing, the, the moon shaped, crescent shaped shadows or highlights really good to work from observation because you can see the 3D forms a lot more easily. Um, but you can take a screenshot from these images if you want to use that. Some people find it hard to see the tones looking at colourful objects, so it can be helpful to photograph them on your phone and, and use a filter to make it black and white just to help you see the shadows and highlights, even if you're drawing from the object. Some people find that quite a useful reference to have. So the rest of this video is uh, my drawing, starting observing the still life objects and drawing the shapes very faintly using lines with the pencil, holding the pencil quite loosely, not gripping it too tightly, not too near the tip, allowing my whole arm to move. Then using the tonal ladder as a reference to remind myself of those very dark tones that I need to put on there in order for the forms to stand out and look three-dimensional. Building up the darkest shadows first. Uh, you'll notice this is sped up. This is um, this drawing took about 40 minutes. Um, I've sped it up to 10 minutes, so it's four times as fast as uh, real time. I'm focusing on the shadows, having mapped out the lines and shapes, I'm focusing on the shadows first. Um, it can be very tempting to start putting details and texture marks on, um, but it's worth leaving that until the very end so that you can get the shadows and highlights down first of all, get the, the forms coming out of the page in three dimensions first of all. Um, so that your objects have a bit of volume. That way if you need to blend any of the tones, if you need to rub, rub anything out, if you need to layer up more dark shading, you can do all that without losing the details and marks that you've put down. So Once I've got the basic dark shadows, blending that in with a paper towel, But at the moment, everything is a mid grey. I don't really have enough contrast between the darkest tones and the lightest tones yet. So 
So this is where I would need to have a look back at the tonal ladder. Start to put in some of those very, very dark tones. You have to be really, really bold with the darkest shadows. It can feel quite difficult to uh, go, go very dark when you're working on white paper. It can feel a bit scary sometimes um, putting in a very, very dark shadow. But unless you do go very, very dark with your darkest shadows, then the drawing will look quite flat. As you saw in the first exercise, when you were drawing the white ball, um, even if you're drawing a light object, the darker shadows can still be very, very dark. And it's that contrast, that difference between the, the lightest tone and the darkest tone that will help your objects pop out from the page, give it that illusion of three-dimensionality. So at the moment I'm using the pencil on its side, so my hand's on top of the pencil. I'm using the flat part of the tip to try and get the soft, softer shading layered up. And then holding it more like a pen when I want to get lines. So as you start to build up those darker tones, it becomes obvious where more contrast needed. You can see there actually with both the pencil shading and the rubber marks, I'm trying to follow the contours of the object. So trying to make sure my shading curves around the object one way or the other, almost like lines of latitude or longitude. That will help create the illusion of a curved surface. I'm working with the sketchbook propped up, um, partly so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, some people like to work with a table easel or with a drawing board propped up, resting on their legs, um, resting against the table at an angle. It can be quite good because you can see what you're drawing behind your drawing. So I can see the kiwi fruits in front of me and compare them to what's on my page. If you prefer to work flat on a table, it's no problem, but you just need to make sure you keep lifting up your drawing or standing up so that you can see it um, from above. Because otherwise the, um, the drawing being on the flat table can cause distortion in what you're seeing and then you put your drawing up at the end and it looks a bit different from what you were expecting. So. Just bear that in mind if you're working flat on a table. So 
So now I've got all of the main shadows and highlights down, I can start to put in a bit more detail. So the seeds of these cut fruit um, and the hairy texture of the skins. I'm doing that with lots of little lines, lots of tiny little lines all over the roots. Because I've got the highlights and shadows drawn there first, you'll see that sense of the form coming through. Whereas if I'd put the texture on first, the fruit may have looked a bit furry, but it probably also would have looked quite flat. The principle behind this whole lesson is that in order to make your drawings look three-dimensional, you need to add tone. So to turn a, a shape, a two-dimensional shape, into something that looks like a three-dimensional form, you need to add tone, highlights and shadows. So to turn a drawing of a circle into a drawing of a sphere, we added the shadow and highlight. And the stronger the contrast between the dark shadows and the light highlights, the more eye-catching and effective that usually is. I've used the whole, um, I've done the whole drawing just with one same pencil, 3B pencil. I had to sharpen it a couple of times. Um, if you want to use a range of pencils, you can do using the um, harder pencils for your faint lines sketching out and then softer pencils for the darker shading. But it is possible to do this exercise, this lesson, just with one pencil, a few pieces of paper. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. Have a go and let me know how you get on.